always got to come and play every night. Uh, on any given night, anybody in our league can be beat. What do you feel like, obviously, these last three games, y'all are, you know, getting wins, playing well. What do you feel like has been the biggest thing? I think it's starting to click on the defensive side. I think, you know, we understand that we got to play as a team and we got to guard, like, their best players as a team. Can't leave nobody on the island to guard by themselves. And we got to execute on offense. But most of all, our defense leads to our offense. Y'all are 4-1 in conference on the road. Mm-hmm. What's been the key there to you guys to play so well? And, I mean, I look back at the Iowa State game and there's almost 12,000 in there and y'all just didn't seem right. Yeah, I think we do a really good job of preparing. Um, Our scout is really elaborate. We are usually locked in. Um, We know how important it is to get road dubs, so just got to be ready, and thanks to our coaches, we are. Are you done with the mask? No. I got a new one today, actually. (laughs) It's really, really ugly. Um, But, yeah, I got to keep wearing it, unfortunately. Like Darth Vader? Or what? Yep, it sure is. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool. It's not. How motivated are you by the fact that Taylor Robertson, both of you, this is for both of you, that she's the all-time leading three-point scorer in NCAA history? What, what, what does that bring to you in your mind for this game? What, does it motivate you? What's the deal? Uh, you got to respect her. You know, she can shoot that thing from anywhere, the other side of the baseline, the, the logo, I'm out of bounds. She can shoot it from anywhere. But, you know, congrats to her for doing that. But you got to respect her game behind the arc. Yeah, it's really important that we get out on her, not let her get shots up, um, get over screens, all that. Well, is there any, in the like the scouting report, is there any talk of trying to deny her the ball or you're just on her super tight when she gets it? Uh, I don't know if we play a such thing as deny. I think we play gap and support defense. You know, I think, you know, we do respect her and know that she can shoot the three, but I don't think we'll ever make a huge change. Um, we just respect her and know she can shoot the three. And it's probably the dream team that has to guard her more than you do, but I'm sure you've had to guard Sarah as well. Mm-hmm. What makes her so tough? Sarah is just a bucket. Like, Sarah is so good, and I tell her this every day, and she's like, no, I'm not good because she's humble. But she, she's, like, so tough, and it, it's, like, sneaky tough. So it's whether or not she'll get her hand on defense, she'll get her hands in there, and you won't even know. You, like, don't even realize. And then on offense, she's shifty. She hits shots, and her court vision is crazy. Like, yeah, you're my idol. Thanks, Dark Vader. <laughs> Have you learned some of those things from Sarah and even other people on the team, just learning the Baylor way of basketball and the pace? And, I mean, you're someone, I would say, similar to Jamie as far as your speed. Like, you've got the speed in you and the tough defense. So just being around them, how has that helped you grow as a player? Yeah, when I first got here, um, Sarah definitely took me under her wing and helped me out with plays and when I was confused because it's a whole new offense for me. Um, and she's been really helpful with that always, and she's super kind about it. So that's my favorite part. What was the crowd like in Ames? It was really big, uh, and you know, hope maybe to get a little taste of that tomorrow night here at the Carroll Center. Uh, it was fun, you know. <laughs> but we need our fans to come out and be like that tomorrow night. I don't think they understand like tomorrow night they'll make a huge difference because like you know in that atmosphere you feed off that energy like. You love playing in games where, like, the fans so engaged. Like, even we're on the road, but, like, it was fun because, like, you're just able to shut the crowd down when you walk away with a road win with a crowd like that. So I just think it's fun to have fans like that. Sarah, like, for the team, when you have a player who really explodes in the second half, you did that a couple times when you won the Big 12 Player of the Week earlier. But for Jamie, how big was her uh, second half, that inside game for the team in the win Saturday? I mean, Jamie, you know, she can go off at any given moment, like, we want her to do that more. We want to see it in the first half and the second half. But I think, you know, she's starting to see it and it's starting to click. Like, okay, I can get here. She's starting to find those spots and, you know, knock down the mid-range. And now you got to guard her from the three, the mid-range layup. So I think now people are having to figure out, now how do I guard her? I can't just guard her for the three-point. But I'm finally, like, I'm glad to see her playing like that. And, like, she's clicking at the right time now. Does that surprise you that she didn't even take the three-point attempt? I'm not sure if she would have had a game like that in her career. Um, I mean, it did surprise me, but Jamie's more than a three-point shooter. 
She's more than just an offensive player. She brings it on defense. I think she has the overall package on both sides, defense and offense. Would you all say there's more emphasis on transition defense for this game than most any that you've played? Uh, I think, you know, kind of them and Iowa State kind of play similar. They both shoot the ball really well from the perimeter, and they have multiple spots um, that can shoot the uh, three. So I think, you know, yes, it kind of got us ready against Iowa State to have to guard the three-point line because on the offensive rebound for them, they're looking to kick it out for a wide-open three. So I think, you know, on transition, we have to squeeze on certain spots where we know shooters and where they're going to try to look to shoot the ball. For either of you, like, what's it like playing with bugs and – talking about she's a shoe in the way freshman of the week every week so what makes her so talented uh you know <laughs> our, t- our freshmen I wouldn't even call them freshmen this late in the season like because they truly don't play like it um Bugs surprises me each game because like she'll make a move and I'm like well like she's still a freshman which is she has so much more to prove and Bella I think you know them two together is like a knockout punch you got to pick your poison they feed off each other so well but I'm just so proud of them because they don't play like freshmen guarding Ashley Jones is not an easy assignment they haven't had easy assignments like guarding those type of players at a this type of level but they stepped up to the plate and you know showed up each night yeah, I'd just say they're gritty and they're tough and they're not freshmen. Like they I mean they are, but and with more experience they're gonna they're gonna be even better than they are now and that's pretty scary. Jenna, at the midway point in conference play kind of area, what would you say you've taken away from this conference from top level? Yeah, I would say the competitiveness of the conference is was like shocking to me. I, I'd heard that like everybody can be everybody in it and and, and that's true. And I really didn't know that because in the Pac-12, there's kind of like there's a hierarchy. So it's 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 fun. You got to really prepare. You got to go in with the right mindset. Anything else? Thank you, ladies. All right, now I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all better be in that crowd now. Um, I think our focus has been good. Um, you know, I don't think any of them have been pretty. Um, I don't. I don't know that we're a pretty team right now, you know. But finding ways to to grind out wins, um, you know, we're, we're always going to have to do it a little defensively and and taking away other people's strengths. I thought, you know, at Iowa State, we were we were really focused on keeping Jones off the boards. Maybe it's because she made all her shots to start the game that that she didn't have any offensive rebounds to get, um, you know. But I thought we did a really good job on Emily Ryan. Um, and, and her point differential in wins versus losses is significant. So we didn't put them on the line, you know, in a, a team that shoots over 80% as a team. So it's kind of like looking at each opponent and, you know, taking away, you know, option one at least um, and, and finding ways to, to make enough baskets to win the game. Yeah, I mean, we, we spent um, the two-day prep before. I mean, we, we stayed in our practice gym and, and cranked crowd noise in, um, you know, and made sure they understood all our play calls uh, signals, you know, because a lot of times you can call them and they can hear them. Um, but every play we have also has a signal, um, so I can call them with my hand. I found out real quickly that I couldn't call horns <laughs> with my left hand because they thought it was one. So... Um, but yeah, so I mean, we noticed things like that. Um, but I think that was a big part of it. We talked a lot about poise. Um, you know, I used the timeout in the first half um, on a on a run that maybe I wouldn't have if we were at home, um, because you want to keep the crowd at bay. Um, but but that was a lot of it. Really talking about being poised about another opportunity to play on ESPN. I didn't think we we had played our best when we played on ESPN against Texas. So it was just another chance to kind of uh, redeem ourselves. I mean, we've played a lot of top 25 teams this season. Um, you know, I mean, people didn't realize what a good win Villanova was when we won that game. And, and uh, you know, I tried to tell the tournament director way back this summer when they were coming out with it that, that I potentially thought that could be a final. 
Um, and no disrespect to Michigan, I think Michigan's put a heck of a season together, but I knew I had that much respect for Villanova. Um, and, and so when, when Villanova went on the road to UConn and had them down five with like four minutes to go, it just kind of proved, you know, that, that they're really, really good. So, you know, I think they're all opportunities, you know, and I think we've, we've played more top 25 opponents than anyone in our league. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, we're always learning, we're always growing, you know, and if they really buy into like, we don't lose, um, we either win or we learn, then we'll, we'll get better, uh, each game. Right. Yeah, until the fourth, you know. We wanted to put Caitlin on her in the fourth, but that was still scary because of foul trouble. So, um, but the goal was always to get to the fourth and then put Kate on her in the fourth. What does it say about what Bell and Buzz, you know, did? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're growing up, you know. I thought, you know, we only gave up five threes, and when I put Bugs in the game, um, she gave up two in a row, one to Jones and then one to um, – D hour, I, how do you say her name? Do, do. do. let me say her name right, do. Um, so, you know, I think after that, you know, like understanding how close you have to be, you know, what your closeout has to look like. Um, and certainly, um, Ashley Jones feels like she has a, a post um, advantage with them as well, which, you know, when Kane's in the game, we had Kate sitting down there just helping. Um, but when Do came in the game, um, which they started for that very reason, I'm sure. Um, that kept us pretty stretched out, and, and she had probably the game of her life. Um, so, I mean, she, she's had some really, really good games for them since Sora's got hurt, but that was clearly her best. <laughs> It doesn't bother me from the perspective of um, I really only care about the game in front of us. And, you know, we have another chance to play against a ranked opponent. Um, and that's what matters to me right now. Do I think teams with similar records that have won as many games against top 25 opponents, that have won as many games against top 25 opponents on neutral floors or road games, do I think we deserve to be ranked? Sure, I do. At the same time, um, I really only care about winning the game in front of us and, you know, and, and being where we need to be at the end of the season. A conference championship means a whole lot more to me than a number in front of our name. Um, a conference championship means another ring and a one in front of our name. So, um, you know, that's the goal. And, and we can only get to that goal if we, we attack the one game in front of us. I'm a little surprised, you know, um, because there was a lot of, a lot of teams lost. Um, that we didn't jump in there, but ton of respect for South Florida who got in there. Like you know, like I, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and talk about who shouldn't be or or um, you know, but but I think you know you've watched um, teams lose three or four games and and then win three or four, and before you know it, they're like they're back up you know around ten. So um, we just we just got to play the game in front of us. I mean, I, I, I see a lot of greatness in her. I also see a lot of growth opportunities in her. And I think that, um, you know, I, I look, she, she's gotten double doubles. And to me, um, if there were 15 freshmen playing in the league, she probably would have won this award multiple times. But when you look at this league and you look at the, the depth and the, and the upper class um, um, strength of this league, you know, you got a lot of teams that aren't even playing freshmen. So, you know, it's, it's I, you know, when, when we played Texas Tech, it's kind of like their two freshmen and our two freshmen um, are winning the lion's share of the awards because they're the ones playing the most minutes. You know, there are a lot of teams in this league that don't even play any freshmen. And um, so, you know, I think that's part of it, but I think she's earned them. And I told her, you know, even though she wears number five to, to not um, be just – you know, happy with this being her fifth award, that six and seven are fine too, um, you know, because that just means she's she's being productive. And I think the key for Bugs is, 
You know, like you look at the OU game the last time, she went one for one and fouled out in nine minutes. <laughs> So I think, you know, and that was in, at home in front of a lot of fans, um, a lot. She had a lot of people at that game. So I'm sure she's excited to play this game. Um, you know, it's been a unique challenge for both of those freshmen. When you look at some of the people that they've had to guard this year and the strength of that position even in our league, um, whether it's Gaston from Texas or Maddie Williams or Ashley Jones, um, that is um, a tough, tough position to put our freshmen in, game in and game out. And so, Briamber Scott, let's, you know, I mean, who's leading the league in scoring. So, you know, you're, um, you know, they're, they're, it's like baptism by fire, you know, for them. And, and I'm just proud that they show up and keep competing. And maybe they don't know what they don't know, um, but they're competing against all American type kids on a regular basis. I do think she gets better as the game goes along. I mean, I think when you come in the game and you um, give up back-to-back -back threes and then someone posts you up and beats you on the low block, it's, it's, uh, um, it can be a little frustrating. Um, but the thing about these guys is that we don't have any choice, <laughs> you know? I mean, Caitlin's in foul trouble, Bella fouls out, and, and you know, we were running actions late and how Iowa State, Iowa State was in man, they were pretty focused on Sarah and they were pretty focused on Jamie off of screens. And so, you know, it was, they were, you know, it was dump downs. It wasn't like we were asking them to make, you know, a lot of um, necessarily difficult plays. Um, they were just layups in difficult moments. And, you know, I thought the big, one of the big plays of the game was her rip drive left-handed layup, um, you know, and, and we've got to really work with her on keeping that pivot foot down on, on that play. But, um, certainly showed some confidence in that moment. And, and she's been in, in a lot of late game situations, so she should be, you know, building confidence in that area. Yeah, yeah. I, and that was a, you know, as, as, and you have to learn how to defend Ashley Jones. You're just not done on the first action. You know, she waits for you to wall up and that's when she plays under your armpit and draws a foul. And so we'd really talk to him about halftime about, you know, like you, you've got to stay in a stance and you've got to be ready to slide until it leaves her hand. And I thought she did that. And I'm telling you over time that she's going to grab that ball. Like one of them, she, you know, like she blocked it and you said she knocked it out of bounds. Eventually she's going to grab that ball and we're going to go the other way. Um, and, and that's growth opportunity. But that was a big play for her um, because they were certainly going at her. They were going at Bella on the low block, whether it was with Kane or whether it was uh, with Dew or whether, you know, they were, they were going down in there and saying, you're going to have to defend us on the low block. No, and they haven't changed a lot since last year. You know, they just play really fast and they shoot it really well. Um, Taylor Robertson's numbers are way up in conference play um, in terms of not that we ever didn't think she was a great shooter, but ironically her, her three-point percentage for her was way down uh, career low um, in the non-conference. She's back up to like 49% from three in conference play, making three a game. Um, Lanus had started playing really, really well before we played them and, you know, went on a, a long streak of, you know, double-figure scoring games. And, um, you know, they're going to tweak some things. They're going to, you know, they've put, they've put Taylor Robertson in a few more uh, ball screens in transition. Um, they've, uh, you know, tweaked a little bit out of, you know, their end-of-quarter situation. But um, there's not a lot different. They just have really talented players that are really good in space and, um, the thing that to me they're they're exceptionally good at is not only end to end pace, but their sideline to sideline pace is is really really good. They cut hard, um, they screen with a purpose. Um, you know, they just they make you work. Um, you know, and and they can certainly run down and score in the first eight, uh, but they can also break you down over the course of a possession by moving the ball side to side. So um, they are really really talented offensively and um, their pace is, is really special. Vicki, you mentioned Bugs fouling out so quickly a while ago. 
I was looking back at the stats from that first game. Baylor had 26 fouls. Oklahoma had 27. Jaden fouled out. Bugs fouled out. They had a couple foul out. Was that exceptionally tough game, or was it closely called? Or that's by far the most foul. Yeah, it was a little of both. Um, certainly, I thought um, you know Maddie Williams had a ton. Um, of free throws herself. Um, you know, I thought that, um, you know, I, I, I tore this tendon before we played them the last time, um, demonstrating how they were going to reach and, and scrap and claw um, on every rebound, on every drive. Um, I mean, they are, they are trained to go get the ball. I mean, it's it's swipes, it's reaches, it's you know, and if you if you grab a rebound and you chin and check, um, you're gonna get pick up a foul because they're coming. Um, if you grab a rebound and you're not ready to chin and check, you know, you're you're either gonna get raked across the arm or they're just gonna get a clean swipe, you know, and and so you know you don't want to leave it up to whether the official is going to call it whether it's clean or not clean and i thought over the course of the game we picked up a lot of those fouls um, partially because we put so much emphasis on hey this is something they're going to do when you catch the ball like if you expose it they're just going to grab it when you drive it into a gap when they come to help they aren't coming to help to, to throw their hands up and play straight up they are coming to take the ball and i think it's a I think it's a mentality that they have. I don't think it's dirty. I don't think it's, I just think it's the mentality that they have that they don't play, you know. Um, I'm always surprised because to me, Liz Scott looks so tall on film and then she gets out there and you recognize she's maybe six foot tall. Um, you know, Maddie Williams is maybe 5'11". So they, they play with a tenacityness, a scrappiness. Um, and so it's just what they do, you know, they just go after the ball. So I think some of it was that I thought we did a pretty good job playing downhill. Um, and I think, you know, we, we fouled them a lot in the lane. I mean, we, we did, you know, and, and we did, we had Jaden fouled out, Bella fouled out, Bugs fouled out, Kate had four, um, Erica went in and fouled three times in 10 minutes. Like, you know, I mean, some of them were probably tough calls, and the majority of them were probably fouls. Nikki, with some of the significant injuries that you guys have dealt with this year, what was it like to watch John come back onto the court, and how can you use that as inspiration for some of your players? Um, <laughs> I think he's an inspiration in general, but I think, you know, before he ever got injured, if you weren't inspired by his work ethic, you're never gonna be inspired. So his comeback is the least shocking thing um, since I've been at Baylor, you know? Like I just, um, there isn't a day that I haven't seen him in the weight room, um, getting extra shots up late at night, early in the morning. Um, you know, everyday John was a nickname for a reason. So I just think he's always been an inspiration in how he plays and how he impacts the game. Um, without being, you know, someone that's a great scorer, um, but but impacts them with how he communicates and and his energy. And so, um, you know, I, I I just think it's it's a great. Um, hopefully, it's a great lift to the men's team. You know, like they they get someone back that um, worked that hard to get back to be, um, you know, a part of this year's team and in the push to the end of the season. So, you know, I just, it's a blessing, you know, I think there's, um, you know, but I don't think it was a blessing without work. <laughs> you know, I, I think he had a lot of prayer warriors out there, um, but you can pray all you want, but, you know, he had to do the work to get back. And, and you know, we, Mike and I work out in the mornings and, and we see him a lot of days, you know, and so, um, you know, it's just, it's an exciting thing for him, for, for the men. Um, but honestly, not particularly shocking because if anyone was going to do the work to get back, he was going to do it. Nikki, that first Oklahoma game, this is an unbelievable stat to me. You had probably your best defensive quarter of the year, held them to five in the first quarter, and then the very next quarter they scored 25. Mm -hmm. what? I mean, did they just get hot? Did we, I mean, I, I, I didn't see the turnovers or anything. I'm just asking. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a couple things. Um, uh, the foul trouble bothered us. They went zone in the second quarter. Caitlin was out. Uh, we were even playing people out of position. Katarina was playing the four for us. Um, she hasn't played a lot of four um, this season, but we were doing it because all three of our fours were in foul trouble. Um, you know, I thought we had some, some turnovers. We had, um, looking back at it, we were firing threes. Now, they were wide open threes um, against the zone, but we just didn't make any. Um, you know, the first quarter we had created turnovers, we'd created long rebounds, and we got buckets in transition. Um, didn't have any transition baskets or few transition baskets in the second quarter. Um, but I think our turnovers led to them getting in transition. Um, you know, I think our lineups affected our ability to def defend them as well as we did in the first half or the first quarter. So um, I just think it was a tale of two quarters. We didn't make shots. They started to make shots. They got on the offensive glass. So it was a little bit of everything. I've watched it three times, um, you know, but, but we just couldn't get anything going. We got them all spread out but couldn't score in the paint. Um, so, yeah, and there's, there, was, there, was no, there was nothing magical about it, but they were in man most of the first quarter, maybe the entire first quarter.